Hey guys, I already have chapstick one. This is part two of <laughs> Makeup Brushes 101, I guess. I don't know. I did a foundation and powder brush video, so this is my eyeshadow brush video. I'm going to try and fly through it as quick as I can. These are all my eyeshadow brushes. This is my newest edition. It's an eyeliner brush, and it's an angled one. Because I wanted to start using um, cream eyeliner again. I remember I used to love them, and then for whatever reason... You know what? I found a liquid eyeliner I was able to use easily. And so then I kind of steered away from gel liners. And so I want to get back into those. And so that's why I bought this angled brush. This one, you can either use it, you dip it in the color in your cream or your gel eyeliner. And you can just go right along your lash line. How thin this is, it is wonderful. And also, you don't always have to go sideways. Because it is angled, you can just, look. and I'm looking in the mirror down here, you can put the color on a brush and just follow your lash line without even turning the brush. And that's what I like about this angled one. And they seem hard to find these days. I got this one on eBay along with the Inglot um, gel liner. But I like this because you don't have to turn the brush sideways versus i don't even think i have a straight edge one i should have been prepared a liner brush such as this one where you d you definitely have to lay it sideways you definitely have to lay it sideways where this one you can just hold it straight and look down in a mirror and just go straight across you don't have to do any weird angles or anything like that because the angle is already there so that's that one. And while I am on, on eyeliner brushes, I'm going to pull out all the brushes that I use for eyeliners. And so I have a lot of duplicates and some of these brushes are triplicates. And so I'm just going to speed up a little bit while I'm grouping my brushes together, which I should have done. Okay, so organize my brushes. <laughs> Since I started with eyeliner, which is the last thing that you do, I, I did mean to start with um, eyeshadow, lid, crease, and all of that. But anyway, so since we talked about the angle, I found the type of brush that I was referring to. Um, and I did mention how the angle brush, it does the work for you. You can just go straight along your lash line and not have to necessarily turn your brush sideways. The type of brush I wanted to compare it to is this is the hourglass number 10 brush it is an angled brush but it's straight and so you have to physically hold the brush to get this line to come on the side and then of course you can turn it and do your wing and then fill it in and so with this brush it's more challenging for me to see trying to get into my inner corner with this one whereas with the angled brush i can just still look straight and not have my arm or trying to bend my wrist to get into the inner corner but they still do the job equally as nicely so this is another type of eyeliner brush so I'm putting those two away other brushes I use for eyeliner <laughs> another silver handle Sephora brush this one is a number 24 and it says smoky eye so I think this was intended to do an outer V but I use it for underneath my lower lash line when I place color under here that's what I use this for. Very seldom do I use it to define my outer V. So this is what I use this for. I really like that brush. And along the same lines, oh, sorry, is the Sephora, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Fenty, <laughs> what number is this? Number 220. When I like a brush, I tend to get more than one if there's a sale or something going on or, I, or if I have a coupon of rewards points. And so I do have two of these, and so one I'm going to put away. This one says precision, and I think it's the same thing as the other one. I think it's supposed to be to define your outer V, and I have used it for that, and I have used it for inner corner highlight. I don't like inner corner highlights where it's just like a blob of color. When I do my inner corner highlight, I place it and bring it a little bit. Um, up into the inner corner and then I take a little bit here so I kind of do like a, a V shape when I do my inner corner highlight also this one is good for because of the shape 
It's also, well for me, it's also good for highlighting my brow bone. And I also use this one, and this is sometimes, this is why too sometimes I get more than one of the same brush if I really like it. I will sweep color underneath my lower lash line with that. So that's what that one's for. So now we're going to go, we're going to stick with that. <laughs> Since we were talking about outer V's and smoking out, so we're going to stick with that. This is Bullet Crease Brush number 86, and this is a Sephora brush. This one I use for my outer V. I don't use it for under my lower lash line because I have wrinkles. And as you can see, going back and forth, it is like moving my skin. If I do use this for underneath my lower lash line, I'll just do it like this. And then I'll just do it this way. I very seldom go back and forth because it moves my skin too much. Well, not too much, but more than I wanted to. But this one really is good for um, your outer V, inner corner, and also brow bone. But brow bone, I will use it if it's not a really light or really shimmery color because this is a, a, a wider brush and so it tends to bring it further down than the previous brush that I showed you. Along the same lines as that is the Hourglass number nine. And this one is their domed eyeshadow brush. I use this for my outer V. And sometimes in a corner, but not often. I don't even always do an inner corner highlight, but sometimes I use it for that. And I definitely use it for my outer V. Or if I'm having trouble with the shadow being patchy in my crease, I will use this to stipple color directly where I want it. Okay, so that's that one. And I do have two of those, and so those are going away. So now we're going to move to where we should have started. <laughs> primer. I don't like using my hands for eyeshadow to blend primer or anything. And so this is a brush that I sometimes use. It's not particularly soft. This is, it says all over eye color. This is a Real Techniques brush. And it says setting brush. And so I think it's supposed to be for like setting under your eye, which I have used it for that and it does work for that, but it's not the softest brush. And so what I used to use it for was when I would put on eye primer, I would use this to blend out my eye primer because of how big it is. And I do have like all of this space here. Even when I raise my eyebrows, I can like blend out my primer in like two or three strokes because of how big this brush is. And so I do like it for that. This is a brush that came in BoxyCharm or something, which I have long since <laughs> canceled my subscription. It says, this is a Real Techniques brush. No, it didn't come in BoxyCharm. I just lied. I'm so sorry. Real Techniques number 205 square foundation brush. I don't know who it uses for the foundation, <laughs> but I use this to smooth out my primer too. And this one is softer than the one I just showed you. Definitely feel synthetic, which makes it great for smoothing out eyeshadow primer. So that's what I use that one for. This one is a Sephora number 80 contour highlight brush. I do, this is the second one I have. The first one I actually do use for um, concealer. This one I use to smooth out my eyeshadow primer. That's what I use this for. Two more, they're both the same. Real Techniques brush. This one is, does it have a number? It says the Luxe Crease Brush. I have used this as a crease brush, but it, I didn't really care for it for that, and so I used this one to smooth out my eyeshadow primer. All right, we're gonna move on to lid brushes. I got stuff here, and I'm like, why is this here? <laughs> Where's my lid brushes? Do I even have any? Like, where are they? <laughs> I have so many brushes here in front of me. Sephora Silver Handle Brush. This one says Cream Shadow number 25. This one I use to pack color on the lid. This one, because it's smaller than, say, something like this. <laughs> I like to use this one and smaller brushes like this one. Or if I'm doing multiple colors on my lid because this can get the color right here and then if I stop here I'll flip it over put another color here pick up the other one I have and then put another color here flip that and put another color here so that's what I use and these are two different brushes but they look the same except the bristles are different colors but they're shaped the same 
I thought they were the same brush, even though they don't look like the same brush. You know what it is? Because the silver handles. And so that's what I use this one for. And if you have smaller lid space than I do, you can definitely use this as a lid brush. But it would just take up too much time for me. And because it, it is um, tapered, you can use it for your brow bone and also inner corner highlight. Brushes, even if it says it's for one thing, that, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you can use that brush for. So, and I like brushes where I can use them for different things. This one is the Sephora Medium Shadow Brush, number 20, I am, I cannot see. Number 14, I thought it said 22. <laughs> this one is the Medium Shadow Brush. So this one too, I'll use for the lid. Usually if I'm doing my lid, like one color here, one color here, because to do my entire lid, this can take up some time because even though I have slightly hooded eyes, I still have to go like all the way over here. <laughs> and I tend to take my lid colors into the crease so that when I look at people, they can still see a hint of the lid color up here. And so that just sometimes takes a while with this brush, but I do really like this brush. Of course, I've had it for like over 15 years still have it it's still soft it still does what i like it to do my other lid brushes um <laughs> this is an hourglass number five this is very thin which is nice this is good for if i'm using um a, a i was gonna say a pressed pigment a loose pigment because this presses the pigment presses into it and then i can just press and do a slight drag and get the color exactly where I want to get it. That's what I use that one for. And this is also really great for cream shadows, which I don't have any, but this is great for that one. I have two of those. <laughs> this is the second one. So that's going to go over there. That's going to go home. I have two of the number three hourglass brushes. Hourglass brushes, look at the reviews. Some of the hourglass brushes I didn't get because reviews were not good. Um, so the ones I did get, I really did like. So this is the number three brush. And to me, it looks like a flat shader brush. And so that's what I use it for. Why did I put a label on one and not the other? I put all over shadow brush label on this one, but on that one, I didn't. And so I used this for all over my lid. And this is a little bit larger than the Sephora brush. And this one I have used like all over my lid with pressed powder and also with loose pigment. And I have not had a problem with it. Very soft, very dense. I like how dense these are and they are weighted, which is probably where the money goes because um, hourglass brushes are expensive. But this is a good brush. So if you want to do the investment, wait for a sale or rewards points or something. For I'm going to switch to crease brushes now. Am I? Yes, I am. <laughs> what did I use this brush for? These two are number 230 Fenty, and it says blending brush, but looking at the reviews, I'm trying to get the glare away. They double as um, a flat shader brush because of the shape. And so I will use this to pack shadow, but what I really like it for is packing shadow in my crease area or my lid color in my crease area. Because as I said, I do take my lid color up into into the crease and also slightly above the crease. And so for this one, I like to pat the shadow here, starting in the crease, which is here, and then above the crease. And once the color is laid, I'll go through and blend it. And because of the shape of this brush, it does allow me to blend in the area where I want it to blend. And so I really like this. You can use it for packing, but for me, it's for me, it's not dense like the hourglass brush for packing, but I do really like it for crease color. Well, my lid color into the crease and above the crease. Actual blending brushes. <laughs> and it says blending, the Fenty number 210. I do have two of these as well. Compared to the hourglass, Fenty brushes are like very, very lightweight. Some people don't like that. Some people like the heavier brushes because they say it's easier to control. But if you can hold the brush, you can hold the brush. Like I don't really care if it's weighted or not. This one, it took me some getting used to as a blending brush because it's kind of square at the top. Like it's not tapered, it's not anything. It's just like flat and square. And so I find that I lay the shadow down 
and then I'll go in and blend and because it is square-ish <laughs> it does make my blending a little quicker especially if I'm trying to take the shadow up a little bit higher as I'm blending and so it took me some getting used to as I said but once I got used to it like I really really liked it another blending brush I have two of these and these are not made well this is the Sephora 19 Pro crease brush I say they're not made well because something inside where the bristles are the bristles are not flat and so that's why it looks like there's a hole in here and they came this way so it's not for me like pressing into the shadows which will disturb how the bristles lay when I received this it was like that and so these two are not well made and how you see those holes that's because the bristles inside are crinkled so then it's yeah so that's how they were manufactured however I still do like these I would not repurchase these or if I happen to purchase another one and it was made well I would just send this one back but I do use them and I do like them for crease color oh these are so soft though and it does allow me to blend shadow where I want to blend it just a general blending brush this is an old Sephora crease brush, number 10. Oh, this is so soft. <laughs> Same concept, blending brush. Blending brushes are pretty basic in what they do. And you can, if you turn it sideways, you can, you know, do your brow bone highlight. You can do, you know, your inner corner, depending on the shape of your eye. If your eye is smaller than mine, this may be too big to do your inner corner highlight, but you can do it for that. This is my favorite blending brush, and I purchased it and realized how much I loved it, and they don't even sell it anymore. This says Pro Drawing Blending, number 42. This one I like because when I put on primer, sometimes when I put on shadow, <clears throat> if I just put the shadow on the brush and try to blend it, if the primer is a tacky primer, it'll just move like all of this skin up here. And so for some shadows, I'll, you know, get it on the brush and then I will draw, huh, drawing brush, <laughs> drawing blending. So I will lay the color down and the, oh, this is so soft and so smooth. So I'll lay the color down and then I'll go back and use the tip of the brush to blend it. And so I do really like how it's tapered as well. So I will lay it. And once I have the color where I want it, then I'll go in and blend it. Oh, this is so soft. And I wish I could find another one. I love this brush. Same concept, smaller, not as good as this one. Like the bristles are shorter. This is way softer, the Sephora one. This is a Real Techniques and it says defining crease brush. But because it's so small, like my crease eats it. Like you see that? <laughs> this is my crease. So if I lower my brows, like where's the color? Like it just disappears into my crease. And so, <laughs> and so what I use this one for, <laughs> I'll use it for inner corner highlight. I'll use it to blend color under my lower lash line. I will also use it to define my outer V or the outer corner. And also for my brow bone highlight because this is just too thin for me to use for other things. Even though I just named like four things I do use it for. And that's what I'm saying. Um, that I mentioned earlier is if a brush just says one thing you can use it for multiple things these two brushes are sort of like an anomaly like I don't know I don't know what I was thinking I'm, I think <laughs> with this one I was wanting to use it as a concealer brush because it's slanted it's crooked like me this is the <laughs> this is a makeup forever brush number 234 it says straight and wavy I don't know what why it's called straight and wavy and so I <laughs> I use this because it's slanted. I can just press it for my inner corner highlight. Or I can just use it for, you know, my outer corner. Just do that whole section, that whole outer V section. That looks weird, my eyeball moving like that, right? <laughs> but that's what I use this one for. Or if I do use it for concealer, you know, this allows me to get right into the corner because of the shape. And also if I'm doing around my nose, I can get right in there too. This one is a Real Techniques brush number. I don't, they don't have, this one doesn't have a number. This one says crease prep brush and it's angled. And so I do the same thing with this one. Inner corner highlight, um, 
my outer corner. I'll stop doing that because I know that looks weird. <laughs> for my outer corner. <laughs> and that's really all that I use that one for. So we're going to switch really quick to the rest of my Real Techniques brushes. And this will be quick because I have multiples and I'm running out of time. I have two of these. These are the Real Techniques. Not It says, I was going to say number, but it doesn't. Base Shadow Brush. I have two of them. And that's all it is. Base Shadow Brush. You can use it for packing, but I use it for blending. I use it for blending my crease color. And usually I use these without placing shadow on it to blend out what's already on my eye. That's kind of what I use those for. I have four of these. Remember I told you if I like a brush I get more. And Real Techniques brushes are really inexpensive and Ulta usually has a sale. You can get these really cheap. This one says can I read Instapop crease brush I don't know whose crease is this small <laughs> so I have four of them so I'm going to put three away this I use for inner corner highlight if I'm doing multiple colors on my lid and especially if I'm using um, loose pigment because this presses and it gets it exactly where I want to get it so that's what I use those for my last four brushes they're all the same. Real, so I'm going to put <laughs> three down. This is the Real Techniques Insta Pop Shade Brush. I really like these, especially for loose pigment, because I can do my press and pull or my press and drag and get the color exactly where I want it. And also is good for pressed shadows as well. I really like this. And because it's angled, you can get right into your inner corner if you're using it just for a highlight for that. Um, but yeah, this is good for lid pressed or loose shadows and it just really gets it where I want it to go. So that is it. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what are some of your favorite brushes if you've done um, a brush video, feel free to link it below and I'll watch it. And if you have any questions about any of these brushes, you know, just leave them down below and I will get back to you. So thanks for watching guys. Bye.